Hello everyone, welcome back to uh, the channel. It's been a while since I talked about this truck um, and the Pierce Aero uh, factory lift kit. Uh, I say factory lift kit because it, it, it lifts up the factory dump bed. It's not an actual uh, dump bed kit. So it's been, ooh, let's see, I installed this uh, November 2022 and I used it all of my concrete season 2023. Performed flawlessly. I really had no issues with the reliability of the kit itself. Um, so there's nothing bad to say about the Pierce Aero kit but right off the bat. Great kit. It did its job. It, it did what it needed to do. Uh, a couple thousand pounds of, you know, concrete, gravel, dirt uh, in the back of my truck. Um, so we're going to discuss the year in review. It's actually like 14 months. Uh, my concrete season ended, was it October 30th, 2023 was the last day um, I used the truck for work. And, um, you know, we're in the beginning of January now. So it's been sitting for, you know, two, two months or so, two and a half months. Um, so <clears throat> we're going to walk over, go through everything and see the issues I actually had. Uh, there were no, obviously, reliability issues. It, it performed flawlessly, but I did come across some issues that um, I wish I can change, but unfortunately I can't. So here we go. Uh, this is the truck, 2016 Silverado, regular cab with the long bed and the Pierce Aero kit I installed uh, in November of 2022. So right off the bat, if you look at the previous videos, I ended up moving back the uh, fuel fill to where they, they recommend putting it. Before it was here and it stuck out kind of right there at the back of the bed. It was, I moved it back because it was just a pain in the ass to, you know, to get the the nozzle in here underneath the tire you know if the bed would had some weight to it uh the suspension would squish and you'd have even less room in there it was just awkward you know i'm, I'm bent over on my knees trying to fill the, the fuel so i brought it back to where they recommend it um unfortunately with this setup you have to lift the bed in order to fill the fuel i tried to figure out a solution to have the stock neck come up to where the fuel cap is but all this is in the way uh, when you lift the bed <clears throat> so you you can't do it uh, so this little shorty right here I have to lift the bed up about a foot or so foot and a half to fill the fuel which is no big deal um, I, I just didn't want to do that because it, it is annoying and when you do have stuff in the bed you know it, it even a foot and a half up, it, it may shift toward the um, the tailgate. Um, you know this this truck I use for um, concrete restoration and new concrete work. So most of the time it's concrete restoration. You know I have resurfacing products in the bed. Uh, you know tools. So when I lift it a foot and a half, you know uh, <clears throat> some of it may slide and may not. Um, but usually it's not a big deal. Um, so that was a kind of that was a bummer. I had to you know move this back and, and raise the bed, but I just couldn't take it anymore. Just trying to shove the uh, the fuel nozzle behind the, that tire there is kind of annoying. And then the other issue I had was this uh, fitting. They originally tell you in the instructions to uh, PVC glue it. Uh, I did that multiple times, uh, and it, it broke off pretty quickly, shortly after it was PVC glued. <clears throat> so, uh, about three, four months into the season, I think I did it around July 2023, I, I pulled it up, cleaned it up, and then I just uh, epoxied it. The epoxy has been holding up, and here we are six, seven months later. Um, it, it's holding up strong. <clears throat> the 
only thing I wish they would change on the kit is allowing you to actually squirt some grease zerks or put some grease zerks in the <clears throat> in the pivot points right now i i spray it every month with uh like a grease a lithium grease or something because you you can't get in there you got to take it all apart to get grease in there um and it was greased at the beginning <clears throat> and you know here we are uh 14 months later and and it's kind of gone there's no more grease so i, I spray them every once in a while <clears throat> the bottom one so there's really no place to uh to uh, get grease in there, so it'd be nice if they actually had it, it you know, grease zerks or kind of a, a setup where you can actually get grease zerks in there and, and squirt some grease in there. I understand it's a universal kit, so um, it, it is what it is. And uh, here's another issue I had. I was having problems filling up the fuel um, <clears throat> because when I was using it, uh, I'm throwing concrete in here, guys. So I mean, it's it's being tossed in here. Uh, it's my Toro Dingoes dropping it in there. So <clears throat> it's kind of damaging the inside of the bed a little bit, even with the liner. So I noticed that my uh, evaporator uh, charcoal canister has the lines have been smashed. So you can see these two lines in here have been smashed and it's not allowing uh, venting of the air in the tank when I fill it. So it uh, <clears throat> it literally trips the, the fuel pump every um, couple seconds. You know, you, you, you hold it in and boom, it pops, the, it triggers the, the gun to stop. So I have to fix that issue. Uh, I think I'm just gonna route the lines underneath so to avoid that altogether uh, I'll do that in the spring when it's uh, you know, not 30 degrees out because <clears throat> it's probably going to take some time uh, but that's really the only issue there and then the biggest issue I had let me go to the other side oh also uh, you know greasing those those pivot points as well um, I, I like to spray those every once in a while because that's literally the only thing holding <clears throat> the, the bed to the frame. And I did notice, I, I tacked these on, so it's probably partially my fault. This little piece of metal here, that's the guide. It comes down and then sits up against the bed or the uh, frame rail to hold the bed from moving side to side. The other side... Uh, did break off uh, you can see this is where the other one was supposed to be um, it it broke off I just tack welded so I got to remake one of those uh, because right now you can kind of move the bed side to side a little bit uh, so that's no big deal I'll just cut out a piece of metal and re-tack that actually I won't tack it I'll full on weld it this time and the biggest issue so the biggest issue was this drive shaft the drive shaft on these um, trucks are aluminum but they're five inches in diameter so I wasn't uh, the, the clearance issue I was having the drive shaft was hitting the bottom of the cylinder under really heavy loads going over bumps so the the suspension took the load you know a couple thousand pounds of concrete but the problem was when i was driving i would hit the bumps or something and then the bump stops would squish even farther causing the uh, cylinder to hit the drive shaft so my solution was um i actually spaced out the bump stops uh maybe three quarters of an inch there's three three shims in there uh you know give it a little extra length uh, to prevent bottoming out or squishing more and then the big boy is i had to replace the drive shaft so the drive shaft shop uh charged me about 760 bucks they couldn't put the uh drive shaft in steel uh, or DOM, whatever you want to call it, um, because the drive shaft is too long. 
Uh, this is a regular cab with an eight foot bed. So th that's their limitation. Uh, they can't go over 70 inches uh, in drive shaft length to make a DOM drive shaft. Um, so this one is 77 inches. So <clears throat> the solution here was they made the drive shaft out of aluminum. They made the drive shaft smaller in diameter. So now it's only three and a half inches in diameter instead of the five inches in diameter. And you can see this on the previous video, the, the size difference. And they made the wall thickness of the drive shaft uh, an eighth of an inch thick compared to the OEM drive shaft, which is, I think, a sixteenth of an inch thick. It was a pretty thin wall. Um, so I'm hoping that's the permanent solution <clears throat> because uh, there are no other options. I, I can't get a smaller drive shaft. Um, than that. Um, the only other solution would be if this doesn't work that I'm going to have to put helper springs and I think somebody on the channel commented uh, I'll probably have to use air struts or shocks or whatever. Uh, the problem with that is um, I, I, I really wouldn't be able to fill those on the job on the job site without installing some kind of compressor on here i really don't want to go that route because there's there's not much room here anyway because uh this the scissors taking up most of the, the space and then you know the cheap ones where you just run the line with a zerk fitting not a zerk fitting but a uh air fitting like a schrader valve and then you air it up uh with a uh, external compressor um, but that is the other option uh, I'm hoping this will do the trick and we're good to go uh, but otherwise the, the kit has been flawless it, it did its job and it works great you know the little bit of uh, fluid leakage here on the um, the reservoir but not not nothing major the only thing i really want to add later uh, i'll do it in the spring is right now it's just wired up to the battery and uh there's the breaker you can see the previous video there is a breaker <clears throat> in the engine compartment so in order to use the kit in order to use the bed i have to uh flip the breaker on so I can use it and then when I'm done with it I trip the breaker to turn it off I'd like to change that in the future and then add a little toggle switch in the, the actual um, driver's area so I can just flip that on and off because now that I have to raise and lower the bed to fill it with fuel uh, I'm going to be using it a little more often and uh, I, I do not want to have to get out all the time and pop the hood and trip and you know shut the breaker on and off so that is the kit in a nutshell uh, it's a great kit it works great it, it's doing exactly what I needed to do for my business uh, I hope this helps anybody who wants to install this on their truck because honestly it, it's it was a lifesaver I, I took a lot of a lot of small jobs uh, in 2023 that otherwise I wouldn't be able to do with the bigger, you know, one ton dump trucks, you know, because those, those damn things are so expensive. Um, whereas this one, it's, it's a V6 and I can throw an E85, which was my lifesaver because uh, last year fuel was still pretty high. Um, and, you know, this one didn't use that much fuel, so... And, you know, those little jobs that I can't take, or, you know, the big guys can't take, you know, 15 feet of sidewalk, 20 feet of sidewalk, 25 feet of sidewalk, those are the jobs I love. They're, they're quick and easy, and they make you more money than the big jobs. Um, so that is why I did this, because I was losing money by losing those jobs because nobody wants those jobs because they're so small because their equipment is so big that they, they have to charge a fortune just to do those little jobs 
Um, so that is why I did that uh, to this truck. And it, it's worked out well. I used it last season from April to October 30th. That was my last work day. And uh, let me see, maybe 30, 35 times um, I, I used the, the dump bed on the truck for, for those particular jobs. And each one of those jobs probably made me about 1500 bucks or so um, for you know a sidewalk <clears throat> because uh, I had this truck. Whereas, you know, you got to get a dumpster or you got to bring your bigger truck and uh, <clears throat> it's just, it costs too much. Um, so that, that was it in a nutshell. Uh, hope you guys aren't scared to do this because, you know, it took me, I think, two weekends to install this. So it wasn't too bad. Uh, you definitely have to weld. Uh, the instructions say it's bolt on, but it is not. So you definitely have to do some welding. Uh, but otherwise, it, it's a great kit. Can't say anything bad about it. Uh, please like and subscribe because uh, I have more content coming. That's it for the uh, Pierce Arrow dump bed kit. Uh, really won't have any more videos on it, um, you know, except for if something happens, something fails on it, which, you know, it probably will. It, it, it takes a beating. You know, two plus thousand pounds of concrete in the back of the bed on a truck that's not meant for it. Something's you know, going to break. So if you have any questions, uh, comments, I mean, I can I can help anybody who's willing to install this kit. Uh, shoot away. Ask me a bunch of questions. I can definitely help you. Uh, it wasn't too bad. The instructions are kind of confusing, but uh, it is normal when you're staring at a piece of paper and you got a whole bunch of parts sitting on the floor, so it can get confusing. All right, guys, uh, enjoy your new year and uh, stay warm. You know, we're expecting a, a nice storm tonight, so uh, I'm freezing already as it is. Take care. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.